If you're thinking of setting up an automated watering system, you'll have three advantages. First and most obvious, convenience. Second, water saving, and therefore money saving. And third, watering will be more uniform. Whereby the different parts of the meadow will require the same amount of water. Our automated watering system consists of four main stages. First, water intake, from where we'll take water for our system. It can be a tap, conveniently having more than one nozzle, to support the hose pipe in case we need it. Or it can be the main water supply of the house, from which, by using AT, we'll take out the water for our system. Second element is, automation controls. These are responsible for opening and closing the water. That is achieved by means of an irrigation valve connected to an irrigation controller. After automation controls, a series of pipes will send the watering to the various sprinklers through which water will come out. These emitters come in different types, depending on the needs. It can be drippers, or sprinklers. When it comes to sprinkling, we have rotors and nozzles, according to the size of our land plot. We will think which element are we going to install, and how are we going to install it. The first step is to elaborate a map of the plot, a scaled map. On it, we will draw the sprinklers with their coverage arc or reach. For the assembly, we draw one, with a compass, and another one where it ends. They must be overlapped. First one with the second one, and so on. We begin in the corner, and move on, all across the surface. We avoid watering the walls, swimming pools or sidewalks, for security, humidity and water saving purposes. It's important to know the pressure and flow that's available in our garden. For large waterings, somewhat complex calculations are needed. In our case, for small and medium gardens, we will rely on our water supply. If we begin for example with a 32 mm pipe, we know, by looking at the charts, that a 32 mm pipe allows for up to 3 cubic meters of water per hour. If we know the flow rate of our sprinklers, for example, this rotor with its nozzle can handle 0.5 cubic meters per hour, we know that in that pipe we can set up 6 sprinklers at most. 0.5 times 6 equals 3, which is the maximum flow for this pipe. Once we have the design, we can go and buy, because we'll know how much sprinklers we're going to need, the hose pipe length, and the amount of irrigation valves needed. Let's go and set up the most important part of our watering system, it's what we call a watering head, is what we see here inside the valve box. Where irrigation valves, valves and control systems are located. In our example we need two stages, that means we need two valves, each of them will water one of the stations. Let's start with our water intake. In this case is a 32 mm pipe. This element is a 32 mm male record, we can see there are three pieces inside. Make sure to notice the order in which these parts are arranged, since you must arrange them in the same order. First, a toothed grip ring. Second, a flat joint. And third, an O-ring. In the piece, if we put our finger inside, we can see there's a limit, which is where the pipe must fit, to avoid leakages, and I push, till it fits. Now we screw it on. And finally, we'll need a plier. The first element of our watering head will be a shut-off valve, which is used for safety reason. In case there's a malfunction in the watering system, by shutting off the valve, the system remains independent from the house. Therefore we don't need to close the main supply. We will apply Teflon tape in the thread to prevent water leakage. Teflon must be applied in the same direction we make the screwing. We tighten it up a little in the last turn. 
we will notice the marking in the thread. A little trick to avoid cross-threading the threads is, make the first turn backwards until you hear a click, and then we begin to screw onwards. The next element is a filter. A water filter, and to clean it up, we simply unscrew it, we remove the filter mesh, put it under the tap, and we put it back inside. If we do this once per season, that should be enough. One important thing is to mind which way these elements must be aligned into. They usually have an arrow pointing at the flow direction. You can't install them backwards because they won't work. Now we have one output for installing two irrigation valves. Therefore we need a T fitting to split the water in two ways. This type of collectors has threaded couplings, that facilitates the unassembly, once the pieces are installed. And they also have an O-ring, so there's no need to apply Teflon. Let's assembly the T fitting. Now we have two valves. This one is an irrigation valve, that has two wires with different colors. That means it can work with 9 volt batteries. This other one, has two wires with the same color. Which means it works with a 24 volt controller. Let's connect them. In the first case, our valve is 3 quarters of an inch, and we have a 1 inch female output. In order to adapt it we need a 1 to 3 quarters reducing nipple. We remind you that this part already has an O-ring, so no Teflon is required. In order to work more comfortable, let's assembly the irrigation valve first. In this case, we do have to apply Teflon. We screw it on, and we screw it on the T-fitting. Just a detail, to assembly this valve, we've used a threaded nipple. Polyethylene threaded nipple. Why? Because if I use metallic parts, in a valve, and I cross-thread it in the first inlet, I can damage the valve, and I have to dump it. This does not happen if I use plastic male adapters. We will assembly the other electrovalve straight into the T-fitting. In this case we have to join in the ends, so we apply Teflon once again. In the valve we also have the flow arrow. We now have our watering head assembled, with its safety valve, filter, and two irrigation valves that will serve two stations. The water outputs, simply with another male threaded nipple, with Teflon and water will flow from here to the different stations. From this point we can assembly our pipe. All these elements will be placed inside a valve box.